financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. The topic today are issues with the home. A little bit different. We're not going to just talk about financial issues. We're going to talk about home issues. Pat Samasco, good to see you. Thank you. Elder law expert, Jeffrey Kirshner. Hi, good to see you. Disability workers' comp expert. And homeowner. And, and homeowner. Homeowner? Fit right in. Homeowner? Homeowner. Homeowner? Homeowner, too, yeah. What's your name? I'm Brian. Brian Small, good to see you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. I got a question. So, home issues, right? Yes. So, I have this this plug that just is like sparks every time I, I, I plug the thing I in. I can't reach the ball to throw it at you. <laughs> Okay. Can you help it's me not with a that? home. Yes, you want a it's home fix. It's not a home improvement show. Google, Google, Google it. You'll get a YouTube on how to do it. You know, YouTube I figured it out. Everything. I call it's called Google. Electricians in your area. I had a lamp <laughs> that was that was not working, and I tried to Google it to figure out how to fix it. And then all of a sudden, I, from there, I'd taken the lamp, and then I'm downstairs in my little workshop, which I haven't used in 20 years since the computer started, and it took me about 10 minutes to completely blow the lamp. They, they do make stores into, for those things. Into 150 <laughs> pieces once I put it into the vice. So so much for the YouTube suggestion. Sides of buying a home, of, of housing to cover. Buying a home, financing options, refinancing, selling the home, solving the underwater problem, avoiding foreclosure. Interesting article I found in Housing Wire uh, a couple days ago says the real reason for the housing crisis. And the essence of the article is from the Urban Institute took the position that it was from refinancing of homes particularly in the range of 2006 and 2007, where people cashed out, they were cashing out in some circumstances at 125% loan to value relationship, and then the market collapsed. So this article was saying that was what caused the problem. It added to the problem, I don't know that you can attribute one factor to the Great Recession, but it does emphasize a point that is important that we talk about. The three-point retirement plan is designed to say, own your own home, have it owned and paid for free and clear by retirement, have cash in the bank and zero debt. If you refi along the way and pull the cash out, you're not gonna get to the goal of having that house paid off. And that runs contrary to the three-point plan. That's a great plan. But I also That's think that plan. getting those arms that they had offered before, the five or seven year arms with minimal all interest, all them, yeah. and then. Absolutely. <clears throat> Refinance to get yourself into a fixed low rate. Just don't pull the cash out. Keep paying off the home. Avoid well, remember, pulling. Whatever you do, don't pull the cash out to pay off your credit card debt. Get rid of your credit card debt through other means. Remember, that one of the logic uh, that the realtors gave us was. Most people only live in their home for seven years. You're going to change homes every seven to eight, ten years. So it's okay if you're pulling cash out because you're going to buy the next yeah, home. Yeah, it's not going to be the same home. Right. Yeah. Except, but it's the same money. Correct. It's the same money. You You've got to have whatever it is paid off. Yeah, you don't have. You, you're not stuck in that home. You can go from home A to home B, but you take all the equity you built into A, and that's your down payment in B. And then you pay, pay that off, you take all the equity then and pay off and you buy C. And by the time you get to D, D is owned free and clear. But you only do that if you pay off principal. Not right. if you're just only paying interest. Yeah, interest only is Interest ridiculous. only loans are terrible. And yeah, don't, that's the worst. don't pull out to reinvest in the stock market. Don't pull Too out. Too dangerous. And, oh my God, I've seen so many of those that, hey, let's get a home equity loan, we'll pull all your money out and let's put it, I can invest it for you and make more and than the what the And the refi guy is rate. telling you to do that, but why is he telling you to do that? Because he makes money when because you refi. Because he wants you to refi. If you don't refi, he doesn't make any money. Everybody's out, I mean, this is America. It's Trumpville. Everybody's out for themselves. It's not, you know, you got to be practical. You have to look out for yourself. You can't just listen to what other people tell you. All right, buying the home. Question one, should I have it inspected? Absolutely. 
An inspector so is wait, essential. I don't, I don't want to spend $600 on the inspection, Brian. Okay, so when... I'm going to tell you, the inspection is the only reason to have inspection. If you're sitting there walking through everything that that guy is watching, but that is not a guarantee that your house is not completely screwed up. And he is not, you can't sue him. You will no. not be able to sue him. Because you have all the but it's still, Oh, you, my. You, you should still have them. need to have an inspector. You want to find the best high-quality inspector you can because you don't know what structurally is wrong with the house unless you're a builder. And so you're hoping that someone else's expertise is at least going to find the problems. Mold in the attic. Uh, black mold in the basement where there's been flooding that's been covered up. You don't know. All right, let's vote. Inspection, yes. Yes, hundred percent, yes. Inspection, yes, as long as you're walking with him, listening to every Everything word that comes out of his see, mouth. And I, and inspection, I, yes. And I don't think you even need to be with him. I think you let him alone. Let him find everything. Let him give you that four-page list of everything that's wrong. And then you take the list. And then tell him. And then what you go back to the seller and say, "These are the things we want you to f to fix." But that's a negotiation depending on market conditions. Right now, we're in a seller's market, so if they've got five offers to sell their home, they're not going to negotiate that much with you. But you can still try. But I think next you, one, you I highlight go to the that. next one. Homeowner's warranty. Absolutely a lot of times essential. the brokers offer this as part, even when you're buying a used home. When you buy a new home, you always have at least a standard one-year warranty. It's required by statute. But on a used home, what do you think about a home? You know what? Warranty? I bought a... Should you pay for it? You know what? Whether you pay for it or you have the, the seller pay for it is part of the negotiation. And then you're paying for it anyway. But you still should take one out. The fact is, is you're buying an unknown and things are going to go wrong. When I bought my house four years ago, furnace went out, air conditioning went out. Cost me a seventy-five right, so dollar copay. You're a yes, absolutely. It's insurance. You need to have insurance if you're going to spend that much money. You need some sort of insurance. Pants on the cuff. I see. These, uh, these are issues that are debatable sometimes. It's. I just see that you're paying for, and typically the insurance company has so many weasel ways out of it that you may not get the benefit. I've. Uh, I've. You and I are from the school of we don't trust insurance companies at all. My position on that changed because of one person. This guy, because it was what about five years ago you bought, four, yeah, um, four. and he kept coming in and telling me how the the, the homeowner's insurance, the, the the home warranty insurance, he kept getting claims. By and the they kept paying. It Here's doesn't work question. unless you force it. Did you get the home inspection? I did. We'll be back after the break. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right. It's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. 
You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. When we went to the break, Brian had something to say about the home inspection. So he got I put a him home on inspection I got and the home never s- found these No, no, things. no. I got the home inspection. I knew what was wrong. The home buyer warranty is protecting me. My furnaces are 34 years old. It cost me about 75 bucks a year to have them come out and make the repairs. This home warranty has fixed the furnace uh, three times and replaced my air conditioner. On, on top of it, it actually fixed a, a pipe that broke. So, and it covered me basically for thousands of dollars with the repairs for what amounts to about $400 a year in warranty costs. So I highly recommend it. I highly recommend an inspection so that you know what you're buying. I knew what it was. I had my builder friend and an inspector come in and we knew what was going on and it helped me so negotiate a lower price for purchasing I'm the house. I'm putting them back on pause. <laughs> so, but here's the bottom line. So if you're conniving at all, by all means, he's going to shoot me, but I have to put a conniver picture up on the screen. Uh, it, the home inspection is great. But the bottom line is if you have that, that policy, you need to use it. You need to read it, and you need to make the claim. So a lot of people make the mistake of they get it, it's in the closing package, and then when a problem comes up in the, the home, claim. they don't even think about making the claim. You need, you, you need to look at it and use it. Do you need an attorney when you're buying a home? Oh, dear God, yes. We hear, a lot of people think this. I'm getting a mortgage. The mortgage company is going to do all the paperwork that needs to happen. There's a title company. What do I need to spend the money on an attorney for if I'm getting a mortgage and they're making sure title is well, good? When, when I got my mortgage, I had uh, our partner, David Bennett, look at the at the closing package, and the tax prorations were completely wrong. Tax for I had title problems? Well, I, th- I think there's all kinds of problems. You're signing numerous documents. There's bound to be at least minor errors in there. Somebody has to independent because you have other parties who are trying to sell you the house, get you the mortgage. They're self-interested in trying to get the deal done. They're putting pressure on you because they've got exterior pressures to get the deal done. You need somebody in your corner to make certain that the deal is done right. I'd say uh, the need for a lawyer is a lot less now as it used to be because in the old days the lawyer used to do all the abstracting and figuring out the title issues and the problems but now with the title and the title insurance it's a lot more of a straightforward type of a a review, a lot less expensive to have someone review it. And and here's the problem, you never need the lawyer when there's never a problem. But if there is a problem, the lawyer catches the problem and avoids the disaster. Everyone should realize one thing from the financial crisis. Mortgage companies make mistakes all the time. They do not do a good job of confirming the title is clear. They don't read the title work when it comes in from the title company. Mistakes happen. The lawyer is supposed to catch those mistakes. How about, they never, how about they never tell you at the closing that you should have the, the, the title commitment and the title insurance marked up so that it's current all the way so through the they, date of closing. So they, they, and that they acknowledge that all the exceptions have been Here's made. a question. Do you need a lawyer to review the closing package, or do you need the lawyer to show up at closing? You need the lawyer to review the purchase agreement first. That's step one. Because in the purchase agreement, you want to make sure you've got your contingencies covered. For example, the inspection clause. A lot of times, you have seven days to inspect, and then you have to notify the seller within eight days as to whether or not you're going to approve it. Your inspector comes on day six, it's Friday, he says to you, I'll have the report to you on Monday. Now all of a sudden you're at day eight already, you don't even have time to make a decision as to whether you're happy or not with the home. You need to make sure your title insurance policy has a waiver of standard exceptions. You want to sometimes try and get the seller to make a representation and warranty that it knows of no problems with the home. That's the big one. Those things go in the purchase agreement. That's step one. Reviewing the, the, the paperwork for closing, you don't need to go to the closing unless there's a problem. If you review the closing documents and everything is fine, you've inspected the home the day before the closing to make sure there's no surprises, you don't really need to have the lawyer there. That's an expense you can avoid. If you inspect the home and there's a big problem and now there's a fight going on and you're on the last couple days to close or you lose your mortgage commitment, your loan commitment, then you need someone to go there to help solve the problem. Well, realistically, those papers should be done ahead of the day of closing. The closing is the day. It's really just 
signing all the documents. All the documents should have been prepared before that morning. And they usually are, but they're usually not prepared until the day before. When I when someone I'm handling a closing for somebody, if they're closing on Friday, I get the lawyer package emailed to me sometime on Thursday afternoon. And you just have to be prepared for if it. If you're lucky but, versus but 20 minutes before the closing. If there are closing. no problems, it's a one-hour review of the paperwork. It's <clears> when there are problems that you need to deal with it. And the whole thing that you're... When you're, buy, when you're hiring the lawyer, it's like buying the insurance policy. You're buying to protect against the problem from occurring and get and the peace of mind that you've been well represented and protected. But it, it's discovering problems along the way. Tax explorations is one, but you know, title problems is the biggest. Is, is, but is probably you're, you're talking about a, a, a several hundred thousand dollar investment. Spend what's a, what's a couple hundred dollars just to make certain everything goes properly? Penny wise and dollar foolish people are when it, when, it, when it comes to those things. You need to, by all means, you should build that into the price. We see that in business deals all the time. Someone comes in, they're forming a new business. Uh, they want to hire me to fi file the articles of incorporation, do the minute book and everything else, and they're going to go sign a lease on a commercial building, and they, don't, and they think they're just going to sign the lease so it's a standard form. The lease is the most complicated document you deal with in business. Landlords have a zillion clauses that screw you every single day of your life in a commercial lease. You need someone to protect you, to analyze, and you can negotiate those terms. Every landlord will negotiate those terms about you know repairs and those issues. But if you don't negotiate, when the furnace goes, the landlord says it's your responsibility. What if you have one month left on your lease? It's now your responsibility to replace a $5,000 commercial furnace? on one month left on the lease, you got to protect yourself. All right, so that's, and we kind of talked about refinancing. That's, that's buying the home, selling the home. What about that? Do you need an attorney to sell the home? Well, there, it's a little bit more narrow. There, you want to make sure you get your money when you're the seller, and you want to avoid making these warranties and reps so that after you've sold the home to the buyer, he doesn't sue you. That's where the lawyer comes in to protect you. We'll be back after the break. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Samasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Samasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us Thursdays, 3 to 4 p.m. for Law & Reality Now on 910 a.m. with Cliff Russell. We have a seminar coming up Wednesday, June 28, 2017, 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m., solving debt issues caused by disability or life's difficult road. Jeff Kirshner, our disability expert, is going to join us. We're going to talk about solving debt issues as well as disability issues. Both issues interlap. If you suffer a disability, you're going to sustain a horrific loss of income, and that puts you in a debt situation. 
And then similarly, even if you don't have a disability, if life's road has caused problems and you've got financial issues, we're going to address all those solutions. How to get out of debt using bankruptcy, how to get out of debt outside of bankruptcy. The seminar is free. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Sign up at lawandreality.com or thavgross.com or call 888-235-HELP. I want to remind our viewers, you're always entitled to come in for a free consultation at Thav Gross. You can go to either website, Thav Gross or LawInReality.com, request a consult by checking the box in the area of your choice, or you can always call 888-235-HELP. Debt issues, tax issues, estate planning issues, elder law issues with Pat Samasco, disability issues or, or workers' comp issues with Jeffrey Kirshner, business issues with myself, all of that is always available. Also, check out the websites. There's three free reports, Business Formations, Loans and Grants for Small Businesses in Detroit and Michigan, Retiree's Guide to Social Security from Pat Samasco, and How to Avoid Foreclosure, The Hidden Se Secrets by yours truly. I want to thank our sponsors, Thav Gross, Samasco Law, and Kirshner Law Office. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. So we saw there's some issues of debate when it comes to buying a house from the standpoint of inspection and everything else. The point is you need to look out and protect yourself. Bottom line, the vote here was have it inspected. Homeowner's warranty is a good idea on a used home. There is a cost attached to it, but if you're going to do it, you have to remember to use it. Now, let's talk about the house, other house issues. The house is underwater. I bought the house. I paid $150 for it. It is now worth 90. I owe on it 120. I see these all the time with seniors moving into the assisted livings and they can't get out of their mortgage because the house is underwater, but they need the money to pay for their assisted living. So the question is, what do you do at that point? So this is very topical. And I, you and I have worked on that. Where yeah. Sometimes we take the money, put it, take the cash, put it into an irrevocable trust to cover them for everything that they need for their assisted living expenses. Right. Now that money's out of their estate. And then what we do with the house is we let it go to foreclosure or we put them, we let it go to foreclosure. Yeah, sometimes you let it go to foreclosure. Sometimes you look at it and say, would a bankruptcy be the best option or would a short sale be the best option? The, the, the key here for, for that type of client, a senior going into an assisted living environment, is to insulate them from collection. Okay, it doesn't matter whether you do a bankruptcy or a trust or whatever, you want to make sure that they're as protected as humanly possible. And it doesn't matter if the house spins in the wind, okay? Careful, there's, my pens. There's stuff on your desk. 
the, 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 at the end of the day... This is a real desk used in the practice of law on a daily basis. This is not a set. I would appreciate it if you don't knock over my belongings. Oh, I should just knock I'm just trying to right throw, you off, throw, anyway, throw you off stride the, if I can. The, the whole point I'm making is, is that you start with the basic premise that protecting the individual is the most important part. How you get there could be any one of those tools. In that scenario, like where we take the money and we move it into an irrevocable trust, we're making them uncollectible. We wouldn't be putting them into a bankruptcy because we don't want the trustees' nose sniffing around to the fact that we took the assets that they did have and put it into an irrevocable trust. Absent a trustee, there's nothing that stops us from doing it. And then all of a sudden now, mom's in the nursing home, you let the house either, you either short sell the house, you let it go to foreclosure, you handle it that way, there's not going to be any successful collection action against mom. So that, all right, so short selling is another strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Chapter 7, how does that work? Well, if you file a Chapter 7, so the house is underwater and they're moving out, and if they qualify for a Chapter 7, that if they normally move out and it's and it's sold at a foreclosure, there may be a deficiency balance that they. If owe. it's their primary residence, will their deficiency come into play? Yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Mi Michigan is a deficiency state. They will come after you. They will sue you. So, in order to avoid being sued and avoid the collection on that that deficiency by filing the bankruptcy that surrenders the debt back to the bank, so it discharges, speak, discharges it, right? It avoids them ever having to repay it. For the, the lender will then foreclose eventually, or maybe not. It doesn't matter whether the lender forecloses. The, the homeowner owes no debt. If the homeowner wants to keep the house, you continue making the mortgage payments. Right. But the point in time, what it does is it gives you the walkaway option to really walk away. People like to walk away, but then if they get foreclosed and there's a deficiency, they can be sued for it. When you file a Chapter 7, you build in the walk away option anytime you want. You can never be sued on the debt. Right. The point you so you, 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 fight, you qualify for a Chapter 7. You know your plan is two years from now to move into an assisted living senior environment. Live there for a period of time, then live there for free for a period of time, and then move, and they still can't come after you. All right. Less than a minute left. I own the home, I'm three months behind, I've got a notice from the lender that they're starting foreclosure, I want to keep the home, there's equity in it, what do I do? In chapter 30 13, seconds? you have to file a chapter 13 and if it's going to sheriff sale for a foreclosure, you have to file that chapter 13 before the sheriff sale. And when you do that, it buys you at least up to six years, five years, five years to pay off what you're behind on the home. Yep. But the key is you must file the case before the auction sale. A minute too late is too late. A minute early is fine. If you're in that situation, you need to call and get help as soon as possible. That's a wrap. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.